Hello everyone, my name is Fox. Today we're going to be taking a look at Hisense's latest TV. This is the H8G. They have the H8F as a previous model, um, which isn't as good for a variety of reasons. As a display itself, as an inexpensive display itself, it's worthwhile. But with the chip that's on board, it's kind of lacking. Uh, so let's go ahead and just kind of take a quick look. So the 8F and below, basically Hisense put in the bare minimum of a chip on there. The benefit for Hisense and Sony is that they are the two TV manufacturers that have Android TV as their web, their smart TV interface. LG uses WebOS, which is a Palm original thing. And for what that's worth, LG's WebOS is very nice, but you can't really load custom stuff on it like you can for Android. Uh, and then Samsung has Tizen, which again, same type of deal. The best thing you're going to get there is like regular apps and then Steam Link is like the most that you're going to get. Here we're going to take a look at emulator performance. Um, uh, but right now, let's just go ahead and take a look at the new chip in here. You can see that the board right here is the uh, MSTAR D6886. This is uh, an interesting chip in that it's kind of a weird offshoot, but uh, we do have two gigs of RAM right now. You can see I still have 800 uh, megabytes of RAM available to me. Previous Hisense TVs uh, were limited to 1.5 gigabytes, so we did get a, a boost of 512 megabytes in terms of RAM, which is super necessary. Two gigabytes of RAM is really what I consider to be the absolute minimum for Android just to maintain that, that smooth type of workflow. So we do have four Cortex A55s. They are pretty solid at 1.4 gigahertz. Uh, throughout, I haven't really seen anything. Governor sent interactive. You can see right there, display. So we are using the Mali 470 GPU. Um, the display is uh, erroneously reporting itself as 1080p, obviously. So the DPI is halved of what it should be. We are, in fact, limited to OpenGL ES 2.0. So it only supports OpenGL S 1.1 and 2.0. It does not support Vulkan at all. So if you're going to be using uh, RetroArch, make sure you do not set Vulkan because otherwise it will just have a black screen. Codex here, you can just kind of pause through this if you want. Uh, you will see Dolby Vision in here, as well as a bunch of uh, VP9, some 4K codecs that are necessary to kind of decode a bunch of stuff. This PPSS PP emulator that I have here, I have to have standalone because the one that's in RetroArch uh, basically doesn't work for me. So I have that just so you can see the performance of that because that's pretty much the top tier of performance. Um, and it's kind of stuttery and it could just because I have used compressed ISOs for that. Um, and we'll kind of go through there. So uh, let's go ahead. One thing that I do recommend that when you set up RetroArch on here, now the good thing is is that I am using an Xbox One controller, and even when I was going through the menu of this, the TV, I was using an Xbox One controller. So as soon as you pair this controller with the TV, it has Bluetooth on here, for, Bluetooth 4.0. Uh, it'll just connect to your controller. There's no problems. There's no external apps that you have to download to connect to it. Everything can be done directly on the TV itself to connect the Xbox One controller to the TV. Uh, so we took a look at the chip. Now we're going to take a look at the performance. Um, benchmarks are, they're fine, but it, I think it's a little bit more valuable for, to see like where that looks uh, emulation wise. Again, before I do anything, one thing that I super duper recommend to do is uh, go into inputs and then bind the menu toggle to L3R3. So that's going to be pushing in here. That's going to be super important, especially if you're loading up some stuff and something breaks that you don't have to rush to your TV remote to kind of get out of there so that you can kind of self-serve yourself directly with the controller by itself. There are some other um, latency things that we can do in here, uh, but for the most part, you're going to want to not really touch most of anything. Um, you can see video here is already set to OpenGL ES, and you don't want to change that. So let's go ahead and just start loading some games. We're going to start with easy stuff first. So we'll do um, Super Mario World 2. This is Yoshi's Island. One of the reasons why I like demoing this game, along with Mega Man X3, is that they are what I can see to be considered to be like the benchmark for Super Nintendo emulation, insofar as if you were to run these games, typically these are the games that require the most out of emulators. Um, meaning that if you can run these and not have any frame hitches, then you're pretty much set. I'm not talking about accuracy or anything else, we're just talking about kind of just performance here. And for the most part, this just plays just fine. 
you can see some graphical issues and, and those types of things you can kind of compensate with uh, overscan but there is some jitter that's going on there so there might be uh, some other things with either V-Sync or other stuff that I have to take a look at but we're just kind of taking a look at performance at this particular regard. Latency feels pretty decent, um, but I would definitely love to have uh, some run ahead here because I can feel it ever so briefly. But I mean, this runs reasonably well. We'll go out of that and close this. Let's go ahead and start running some more stuff. Unfortunately, it does look like 3DO is not working at the moment, so I won't be able to test that. And Burnout Legends I have to do in the other um, the other emulator. Let's take a look at Super Mario World. I've already saved something here, so let's go ahead and load up my previous. Super Mario 64, such an amazing game. Uh, load content, we'll go here. Let's go ahead and look at Twisted Metal 2. And I have foolishly not, you can see that it says no BIOS found. Uh, I completely forgot about it, but thankfully PSX Rearmed seems to run despite that, which is great. Um, because I was just kind of putting stuff on there and I was like, ah, can't believe I forgot the BIOS. I will say that RetroArch has done a, a really good job of conveying errors like BIOS not loading because there used to be a point in time where RetroArch would just not do anything. It would just have a black screen and you wouldn't know what was going on. And I, I tend to think that that's, especially the early days of when people were trying out um, RetroArch, is that it was obtuse and a lot of people weren't super happy with it. Rocket. 
bullets. Well, you know, weapons. Alright, so that runs well. Uh, PlayStation emulation is pretty much in the bag, which is good. Let's go back in the start directory and see what else we got in here. Virtual Racing Deluxe is a 32x game, so we are using Pico Drive as the core emulator here. You know what I love about old games is like uh, having voice was such a huge deal in the early days. And especially as a developer, like, you know, they were <laughs> really conscious about storage size. So <laughs> spending that space on um, voice, I could understand being <laughs> like, oh my god, this takes 256k just for virtual racing. Should we really put this on there? But man, when this game came out, it looks... <laughs> man, is it the looks of it right now? You know, I kind of like it. I still like it. It's probably because I'm super old. Breaks. Also, the early days of 3D, especially with Sega, like, investing in quads, uh, there is a very distinctive Sega 3D feel from the 90s that I absolutely love. Uh, and it is very apparent in the wheels. Uh, but you can, like, see it from the, oh, a lot of Sega arcade games in the 90s just use a bunch of quads. And it has a very, very distinctive look that I really enjoy. So there's that. Uh, okay, so for the most part, a lot of things run. And the one thing that I really do like about RetroArch is that we can use uh, achievements. And this is done through retroachievements.org. I am such a big fan of that, especially revisiting older games with a lot of the community putting in their own achievements on there. I'm such a big fan of it, and it's been helping me to revisit a lot of older games um, just because it's kind of fun. So we've done everything here. Let's go ahead and take a look at PPSSPP, uh, the PSP emulator, which just runs just good like this, thankfully. Uh, one of these is on, you know what, I should have uh, curses. So one of these is on the USB stick that's connected to the back of this TV, and the USB stick that I have on there is not terribly fast. Uh, I, this is running off of a compressed ISO. So one of the things that I'm concerned about, especially when you start seeing the performance, is that there is this big stutter. And then for a period of time, it runs really, really well. So I really have to think that this is because it's the compressed ISO, but really PSP emulation is gonna be the top tier of stuff that we're doing here. So it's going to be like this for a bit, and then it's going to kind of open up. But I'm glad that I was able to kind of show that, you know, this is not going to run everything. Again, the chip on here is like the minimum of good for Android. This is running Android 9, and we do have 2 gigs of RAM. Uh, and the, the CPUs themselves and the GPU themselves are... I mean, they're okay, but I would wager that the chip, the system on a chip that's in this TV is like a dollar or two dollars. It's got to be something outrageously cheap. And there we go. Oh, 
son of a biscuit. No. So it is worth noting that we are pretty much the lowest settings that can possibly be done on PPSSPP. So all speed hacks are enabled, native resolution. We're not doing anything crazy here. Should pick up in a second, and it does. Just something right there that's constantly bogging it down. second ahead. Seems like as soon as we start getting that sun right in there, that it all starts really going downhill. It's such a strange thing. So right now I'm about five feet away from the TV. I'm gonna go about 15 feet away and see how this affects it. So you can't really see me in the reflection of the TV at all. The controller still works at 15 feet away just fine. Yeah. So basically this is a really good, like, if you're going to have a bedroom TV and you didn't want to have any other devices that you had to hook up and you can just kind of have it floating and be self-serving completely on the TV itself. You biscuit <laughs> came right for me. <laughs> I'm going to tear this guy up. Alrighty. So, this has been the Hisense H8G. This is the G series, HG series. The system on a chip is uh, a considerably better than the previous gen models. Uh, so this is some emulation performance. Um, just so you can kind of, have a, kind of have an idea. This is running directly on the TV itself. There's not any external boxes. Um, yeah, that's it. Um, as always, guys, thank you for your time. Thanks for watching.